I think this is a topic that deserves further conversation, both in the media and in politics. The Washington Post put out a story where it showed that a lot of people are being left behind. The people that are being left behind are the people without college degrees. These are people who have been sending out hundreds and hundreds of applications for jobs, but in most cases, they'll be lucky to get one response. And a lot of times that response might turn into an interview, but then it's a no. All job applications appear to require college educations. So they want a bachelor degree degree or they want a bachelor degree or an associate degree. In the meantime, employers are complaining that they can't find workers. And yet, some of these people without college degrees may have been doing the job that the position requires. They may have been doing it for years, but because they don't have the degree, they don't get the job. In the United States, 4 million adults without college degrees can't find work. And in March last year, with 916,000 jobs were added into the economy, but only 7,000 of those jobs were filled by people who only had a high school degree. Or high, only 7,000 of those jobs were filled with people with only a high school diploma. So it's not hard to see how this would impact certain communities, such as women, marginalized communities, and also people who are older. They're not the preferred workforce, according to most physicians. So... It is not a surprise that we have an epidemic of opioids, drug abuse, alcoholism, and suicide. People are giving up. If you are sending out hundreds of applications every single month and applying and applying and applying for jobs, and you're just getting nowhere, it's hard not to give up. The policymakers and the media are only looking at people with college degrees. My case in point is you hear a lot of the politicians talking about forgiving student loans. Well, that's fine if you've gone to college. I mean, I agree, the college degrees are very expensive, which is why there's so many people that can't afford to go. But forgiving student loans is not going to solve all the problems of the workforce. Batyangar Sargan, she's been the voice of this topic. She has been talking, she's written a book and she's been speaking about the working class being hidden by the media. People feel hopeless and the people that are in these working class environments, they're the ones that are seeing the most contempt. She also mentions that in 2011 and 2012 was when a lot of media outlets went digital. And as a result of going digital, they were using specific words to increase their viewership. And some of those words were woke, marginalization, oppression, etc. And these words were used to attract the affluent white readership. So as a result, we have people not being heard by the media. This was the start of the obsession with racism and power. And while all you hear is about racism and power, 
what it really comes down to is class. So very few people are really speaking to the working class. If they are speaking to the working class, they're dumbing down their conversations as if the working class are stupid people. Look at CNN, look at other news outlets where you have panels. A lot of coverage is steered away from basic reports, stand-up reports, to panel discussions. And a lot of that has to do with filling time because of 24-hour cable. When you look at the panel discussions, I'd like you to show me, send me a link of an example where the pundits represent the actual working class. It's hard to find. All the people that sit on the panels are lawyers, doctors, former politicians. These are people who are affluent and most of them are white. So representation matters and it matters not only when you're looking at jobs, particular jobs like the Supreme Court or, or even sports. Representation matters in the media. It's not about hiring a black guy or a Asian woman. It's about who you are speaking to. And one of the things that the media's anti-racism rant seems to do is mask the contempt for the poor. And Sargon goes into more details on this in her blogs and her books and her interviews. But when you look at even Joseph Pulitzer, when he was discussing journalism at the beginning, he said, never lack sympathy with the poor. Well, we've lost that because the poor do not get any coverage. We see arguments in politics where they're talking about food stamps and all these things. They want to take all these, cut all these social programs as if that's going to help anything. But that just marginalizes the poor more and it really shows more contempt for the working class. A lot of working class people just need a leg up. They need that lift, even if it's an extra $2 an hour in their salary, anything to help them over that hump. But now they can't even get a job because every single job requires that they spend $100,000 to go get a four-year college education, which is never going to happen because they'll never be able to afford it. A lot of people will do this part-time and get their degree eventually over time, but that doesn't help them in the short run. There's a really good interview with Sargon and, and Megan Kelly. And it's interesting because one of the things she says is that the liberal media call all Trump voters racist. Well, half the U.S. voted for Trump in both elections. <clears throat> so who voted for Trump? It was most of the people without a college degree. And this was very confusing to the liberal media and to everybody around them. It was an interesting discussion. You need to watch this interview. The Fox audience is the working class. They don't dumb down the conversation to the people. And when they're hiring their hosts, their hosts are not Rhodes Scholars, their hosts are not degrees from Stanford. In fact, Sean Hannity doesn't even have a college degree. This resonates a lot with the working class, even though they're making gazillions of dollars now, but it's still perception and the fact that 
the working class is their audience. And there's a reason that the other media outlets may not have attracted as many working class is because they're not actually showing the working class. That's my opinion. I think that if you're going to have a panel discussion about social issues, you need somebody on there who's actually <laughs> going through it. While I enjoy some of them, scrap those panels of all the people that come back every single day, every single week, the same people day in and day out, and bring on real people who are in the community, who are doing the work. If you're going to talk about recovery after the pandemic, bring on a restaurant owner who has a small restaurant in a marginalized community. Bring on a home working mom who's got a graphic design company that she's trying to get work for. Bring on people like that. These are the people you see every day. These are the people that are in a lot of the business networking groups, in the local groups. But they're the people that are getting ignored when it comes to a lot of the discussions in politics and media. They think they know what these people want, but have they really asked them? Probably the best optic I can think of that's recent is Senator Joe Manchin on his yacht talking down to his voters. Then you look at somebody like OAC, who has an Instagram account, and she talks to people one-on-one -on -one every day or every week. So the downward mobile are forgotten. And the problem we're seeing right now with recovery from the world as it is with the pandemic, when we're going into another new elections, if these people still feel ignored, if these people still feel like they're forgotten and that their voice doesn't matter, and it doesn't, and if it did matter, why are none of them on these shows? If the people who haven't attended college, the people who finished high school, can't get a real job, like a good paying job, and if you've got work environments for the service industry, which are some of the only jobs that they can get, are so toxic environments, and now all the discussion is on forcing people to work while they're sick. It's not going to be a surprise when the election rolls around and seats are lost. Again, it's not going to be a surprise when you're going to see even a bigger increase in crime and despair and suicides. Because what other option do people have if they're getting the door slammed everywhere they go? Yes, everybody's responsible for their own, their own selves, but it is hard for some people who don't have those tools. They don't have the people around them that can help lift them up. Sometimes it just takes just one little thing. It takes somebody to show them kindness. It takes somebody to, to appreciate them, to show them that they are worth something. Maybe then you'll see change. But until people are represented in the media, not just the media themselves, but until they're represented as the actual people who they go to for advice and commentary, until you see people in politics going to the people, not just during election time, and hearing them out, listening to them, and getting ideas.
until that happens, or at least until people feel that that's happened. It's going to be an interesting <laughs> next few couple of years. It is disheartening, but I think this needs more discussion on every station, every newspaper, every blog. It's a discussion. Let's see where it goes. But I found that this Washington Post interview and these other posts by this author and journalist were, were interesting enough to do a commentary on it because nobody else seems to be talking about it. 